right good morning everyone i hope you are doing well so welcome to our first career session of week 11. it's going to be about productivity and i received some reviews regarding the previous week challenges so many people were telling me that they were eye-opening and they enjoyed working on them and you know i was so happy to hear that so Thank you for everyone who shared um, the reviews on how it was. Like we are currently building behaviors, are uh, um, you know, in before we start talking about career readiness sessions. Uh, yeah, but I'm so happy that this is all going well. Today is is going to be about product proactivity. We are going to be focusing much on uh, how do you become a proactive leader and how do you avoid being a reactive leader? So let's get started. Let's hear what is it and why is one acceptable and another one not acceptable. So I want to hear, um, anyone here who read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? There is a book about it. There are websites. There are anywhere. I mean, on Google, it's everywhere. Anyone who read about the seven habits of highly effective people before, please share with us. Just or, or, or say yes, and then I will ask my next question. Anyone? I know people like Yvonne who said they like to read books. Have Yvonne, have you? ever came around the seven habits of highly effective people? Oh, uh, no, 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 um, not oh, you, yet. You haven't read it yet? Yes, but I have kind of seen it, but I haven't touched it yet. OK, it's, it's all right. In my, it's in my schedule. <laughs> yeah, I hope you get to read it. For me, I read it, and when I tell you that it's very eye-opening, for most of the things we do not care about or give so much attention to, you know, that's what you are going to be finding there. And today we will be talking about one of the habits of highly effective people. Mind you, this is, uh, this is a book that is recommended to most of the leaders or people who are ready to take different leader, leadership positions, uh, you know, in any kind of sector this reflects to everyone wherever they are so let's hear from rodolf rodolf you you said yes can you share with us how was the book is it a book that you read or you found it on google or where just tell us about it a little bit and how was it reading about it hello hey can you hear me yeah we can hear you Okay, um, regarding the seven habits of a highly effective people, I didn't read the whole book yet. I read, uh, uh, I read a couple of chapters. And in summary, this book is powerful. Among the book I've, I've read up to now, it is, it is one of my favorites. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is one of my favorite because it shapes it shape your perception in life and uh, it push you to change your paradigm, the way you think. It push you to to go to another level. Basically, you it, it help you to work harder on yourself rather than other things. So that's it. I don't know. My video is uh, on. This is the book I have in my hand because I have it. I don't okay. know if you guys are seeing it. No, we cannot mm -hmm. see it, but you can share it with us in the community channel. We would like to see that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. If you can, I don't know if you can uh, cancel your stop your your sharing. You can see it is my hand. I, I, I was thinking you guys are seeing it. Yeah, we can see it with the blue color. Okay, good. So, okay. Yeah, big yeah. time. Big time. Okay, so happy to hear that. Seven habits of highly 
uh, let me show you about it since more people haven't read about it yet. So this is the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and very recommended to leaders. Uh, you can read the book, but it's too, it has too many pages. So you can also find an audio book just in case you are not a, read, a reading person. But these are the seven habits of highly effective people. The very number one is be proactive which is what we are going to be talking about today. And then the next ones is begin with the end in mind, then put first things first, like in very important things first, and then think win-win situations. In any kind of conversations, this is how you influence people. Anyone, think about win-win situations. When you are trying to influence someone or trying to deliver your opinion, just ensure that your opinion is not one-sided. Like, it's not just about you. Think about a win-win situation. How about the person you are telling, you know? Then seek first to understand, then be understood. Very important because most of the time, we tend to put our opinions at first. And when you have your opinion stuck in your mind, you get to... Uh, how can I say it? You get to ignore everything else that other people are telling you. So as a, a highly effective people, you listen more than you speak. So you tend to first understand and then bring in your ideas after, you know, when you're seeking to be understood. Then synergize, work everything in synergy. Where are you... Um, how can I call it, the synergy? Okay, if for instance, you are in part of the product team, but you have to communicate with the customer success team and you have to communicate with the UI and uh, UX design team. How do you synergize your work so that it becomes simpler? How do you manage the communication between all uh, the three of you guys to ensure that you are working on the same goal and everyone is on uh, is on the same page with what you are uh, talking about, you know. But I'm not going to be explaining these like in depth. But these are the seven habits of highly effective people. Now, uh, let's come back to our slides where we are going to be talking about the very first habit: be proactive. What do they say about being proactive? Being proactive is taking responsibility of your life in general. That's what the book talks about. In general, not only in your professional life, but even in your life, you know, it's about taking responsibility of your life. And what does it mean? Being proactive is being obsessed with you. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, sorry for that. I was think my that my network dropped and my presentation removed. Okay, we're back. All right. So being proactive is when you make good choices to prevent something from escalating. Something has already happened. These are the kind of reactions, by the way. You can a either react proactively or react reactively. So proactive, it means something has already happened, but the way you handle it is the way you have to make good choices just to prevent it from escalating, from it bringing negative circumstances when you were able to prevent those negative circumstances from happening and then reactive is when you deal with things that happened when you were not prepared something just happened you were not prepared and you are going to be reacting about it we've been talking about adaptability in the past we've been talking about uh not procrastinating things they all come back to how you react to the situation you want to try to deal with things that happened when you were not prepared for them to happen. I believe this shows 
a clear picture. So for proactive, you're trying to make good decisions. Reactive, you are trying to deal with things that happened. You know, you are trying to deal with them. And here's a good example, uh, good examples of how uh, these two things are different and uh, how you can understand them better. Proactive people always, they do not blame anyone or anything. They do not blame anyone or anything. Was it a project that you were supposed to be working on, but you didn't complete on time? And Yabi is asking about the progress and you are a team member or a team leader within your group. And you start to say, oh, it, it's, it was because who and who didn't play their part in the activity we were doing. No, proactive people do not blame anyone or anything. You go ahead and acknowledge that you missed the project deadline and go ahead and find a solution. You do not focus on what's not moving. And then number two, their behavior is a product of their conscious choices. They are based on values. And number three, they carry the weather with them. What does this mean? It's like in proverbs, uh, carrying your weather with you. Like you are not surprised if it shines or when it rains, you are not surprised with any outcome. So you always carry it with you. You are ready to stand up in any kind of situation, in any kind of season when things do not go as expected. And then number four, you are influenced by external stimulus. Like you look for uh, external options and those are the ones that influence you, like the possibility of things happening. And then number five, their response is value-based choice or responses. They are always focused on, I mean, they are always based on the values. Are you a kind of person, how can I say this? Is your values being um, a non-excuses person? Like you do not like excuses. You do not like to give or receive excuses. Those are part of your values in your life. So being a proactive person, it reflects that. It reflects that you are, you do not really accommodate any excuses, either from you or from anyone else. So that's one example of a value that we can say that your response as a proactive person can be based on. And then what about reactive people? They blame re circumstances and conditions and conditioning. These are the people you will find that most of the time you are having a conversation, but they look like they want to fight. When you are actually all bringing your ideas and trying to make things happen, but for them, they are trying to blame everything and everyone and not bringing any specific solution or specific um, valid idea to make things work at the end of the day. So they keep blaming everything. And their behavior is a product of their conditions based on the feelings. Their behavior reflects the kind of feeling or the kind of behavior or the kind of condition they are currently in. You know, if they were mad or probably they had some problems at home and uh, they get into the project work and things are not going as expected and they start to uh, react in a kind of way they look like they want to fight. It's specifically because they do not want to come down and put whatever happened at home at home and leave it at home and then come back and focus on work. So most of the time their behaviors is based on the conditions and the feelings that they cannot let go. And then on the weather part, when the weather is good, they feel good. Like, oh, if they feel like they want some rain to happen, if they feel like um, uh, things are going well within the workplace, they are okay. But when things turn down, which actually always happens, changes happens, especially in workplaces, especially in the startups that we're going to be joining anytime when we complete our 10 academy trainings, change happens every day. I once worked for a company that we used to joke that change was the constant thing in our workplace. Like it was the constant thing. You would wake up this week and you have a very different focus with the focus you had last week. So 
how do you feel about it? Do you feel bad or do you just look for how to be successful in the new focus that the company has set for this week? You know, the way you go for it is what demonstrates your, uh, if you are a proactive or a reactive person. And there's a number last, reactive people build their lives around others' emotions. Um, I say this on a team leader perspective. When you have, um, uh, when you have team members, for instance, okay, let's say you have another team member who is also trying to debate so much and trying to look like they are fighting. I'm not, I'm not saying that bringing your ideas and everything is, is not okay, but bringing, bringing your ideas in a constructive manner is what's okay. So imagine you have another person and they are trying to also look like they wanna fight just into that conversation, trying to make things work. So another reactive person, they like this kind of environment. You know, they build their lives around others' emotions, others' reactions because that's where they feel comfortable when other people want to fight them, which is not okay. So I actually, we are going just to do a small reflection and it's going to reveal to us what kind of people do we, are we specifically. Before we do that, there is this famous, um, uh, can I call it, there is this famous way of demonstrating the, inside our task, inside our responsibilities, how do we um, say that we are proactive or reactive people? It shows by these two cycles we have here. They show these two cycles. Inside is the cycle of influence and outside is the cycle of concern. Inside is the cycle of influence, the things you want to influence. And then outside is the cycle of concern. So the cycle of concern is the things you cannot control. You are concerned so much about them, but to be honest, you cannot control them. You know, we always talk about changes happening in the country. You know, in the company. So when you are so much focused about or concerned about why those changes happened, or who brought the idea of changing them, why didn't they consider this and that? Why didn't they ask you? All those kind of concerns you have, those are the things you cannot control. And those are the things that shows your reactive focus. And those are the things we should not be caring about. Because um, when you are still under the implementation teams, where most of us are going to do, to go, and you have senior management taking decisions, really the cycle of concern is not your business. Like it's not our business. Let me put myself there as well. It's not our business. We have to be focusing on the cycle of influence, what we can control. Or oh, did I write the same what you can't control? This is an error. So what you can control is the cycle of influence. Why do we call it a cycle of influence? It's because in here you have things you can influence things you can work on specifically and ensure that everything is going well. So proactive focus, this is it in the cycle of influence where positive energy enlarges the site in, in the cycle of influence and outside here in the cycle of concern, that's where we have the reactive focus, that's where we have the negative energy being talked about here. So let's do some reflection. You do not have to answer, just think about it yourself. We just have four questions here. What are you currently spending the majority of your focus and time in? Is it in the cycle of concern or the cycle of influence? Think about 10 academy perspective or even in your life, normal life, back at home where you live or in your neighborhood. What are you currently spending the majority of your focus and time in the cycle of concern or in the cycle of influence of what you can do. Think about that. You already have an answer. Number two, are you currently being pers as personally effective as you can in your professional life? 
are you currently being as personally effective as you can in your professional life, especially talking here at Ten Academy? Do you think you are being personally effective to yourself, to the community? Number three, what strategies could you use to help you focus on the things you can control? If you have been focusing on things you cannot control, like you, you spend so much time asking yourself questions you know you do not have an answer to, what strategies could you use to help you focus on things you can influence? What strategies? And then on the last, what can you do today to expand your cycle of influence to be to build more positive energy in your professional life? You know, what can you do today? to expand your cycle of influence, to build more positive energy in your professional life? What things are you not going to be caring about? I will give you an example, just from this whole reflection. So there was a time I had a colleague who was not really active and we were very few in the team and I had so many things that I had to work on in synergy with her. And everyone could see that he's not active. And for me, I was taking it as, um, you know, I would always mention it. Like, oh, we are late because I've tried to reach him. I, I've tried to reach her, but she has been not responding. So let's see what happens. And of course they would take it like that because everyone is getting paid to do the, their job. So we would sit and wait for her. And more as more as it went on, I realized that my face is being put in the same basket as her face that we are not delivering. They are not going to be calling out one person and ask them why uh, we are not delivering. No, they will call you as, as a team and you will be put in the same basket and you will be questioned together. So what did I do to really not focus on my reaction part and get angry that I'm working alone and um, you know, re reacting that so many different negative way? I chose to tell her that you know, whenever you are not around, expect that I will be doing the work. Expect that I will be doing the work. And that's really not a good thing to do to your colleague, uh, because everyone has their part into the project. So doing someone else's work is a little bit disrespectful and not even a little bit, it's very disrespectful. So, but I decided to communicate with her respectfully that anytime she's not available, I'm going to be covering her. I'm going to be doing the work myself. And of course, that's how I expanded my cycle of influence. And that brought positive energy in my life again because all the time I was always negative and I was talking about it almost to everyone, you know, and I could have fixed the problem a long time ago, but I decided to do that on a very last minute, but it helped. It brought joy back to my life and I felt like I have a responsibility to do the work. And later on, I think she realized that she does not have enough time to spend into the company, into the work she was doing, and she left. And when she left, I was already used to doing this work alone. And, you know, life continued. All good. So also to you, what can you do today to expand your life, uh, your cycle of influence, and build more positive energy in your professional life? Think about that one. Even at Ten Academy, I believe we have this kind of experiences as trainees because we have been here for long. We have been interacting with different people. We have been submitting different challenges. 
we have been working in different groups. So you probably have something that you sometimes take negatively and you can actually change this view and make it positive again. So building that kind of behavior, I'm happy that we're talking about that this today. So let's talk about leadership wise, you know, you as a leader, uh, everyone is a leader, no matter if you're a team member or a team leader at a certain company, everyone is a leader in your own delivery or managerial level. So the number one first thing is think long term. You must understand that short term thinking is not good for the idea of a pro proactive leadership at all. Thinking long term, coming back to my example in the company I was working in and the lady who was not delivering at all. If I thought about the bigger picture, sorry, if I thought about the bigger picture, uh, w what is the bigger picture? Is getting the the project done and presenting it to our managers. That's the bigger picture. So if I kept focusing on the bigger picture and thinking about long term, I would have looked for a solution instead of waiting for the very last date and giving out excuses that my teammate is not active. You know, so we should be embracing long term thinking what does this have to do with any long-term goal do we want to achieve that's the very first thing number two um seek to understand others to be a proactive leader you must seek to understand others remember that leadership is influence leadership is influence if there is no influence then oh my god we call that dictatorship and no one is going to be respecting you or responding to you when you have when you feel so bossy when you because you are a leader to a certain group when you feel um so bossy because you even probably you are not a leader but you know too much within the team so no one is really going to be respecting you to you back so understanding your team members needs and aspiration to influence them effectively that's what we that, that, that's what it's all about when we talk about seeking to understand others so you should be um looking to understand their likes within your team actually when you join any kind of new team we will talk about it in the upcoming careers when you join a new team you should be having so many coffee hours with almost everyone within your team because you want to understand their likes, you want to understand their challenges, their aspirations, the frustrations, how they like to work. Do they like someone who asks for updates or do they uh, like someone who leaves the autonomy of the project to them? And because they know that they will be delivering on time. I mean, just to understand them as humans, that's something we should be doing if you want to be a proactive leader. So by doing that, you will gain important insights on how to influence them appropriately. And um, we should be remembering that without having the capacity to understand others, it is almost impossible to lead because um, always leadership is a group activity. It's not someone else's activity or just your activity as a leader, no. You know, so always be compassionate, be loyal, be full, full of integrity because this kind of attributes will help you or will show your team that you are committed to understanding them. And you are committed to building a trustworthy team that everyone can find themselves into. The number three, develop organizational skills. Proactive leaders don't have time to spend reacting to environment since time is of the essence for them. Therefore, wasting time, it's never an option for you. Wasting time thinking about things that are, are concerning you, but you shouldn't be concerned at all. Uh, you are wasting time, so you should be organizational. Uh, how can I call this? So, okay, for instance, uh, th that's how different companies plan 
do the planning specifically, the activity code planning, where they involve everyone to understand where the company is going, to understand what are the goals for that certain quarter, to understand uh, what are we trying to achieve even from a quarter to a monthly basis. So that for anything that might come on the way, you do not have to take so much time caring about it. You already have the vision of what you want to achieve and you do not have time to reflect so much on small things that do not really matter in the current context of things you want to achieve. So be organized in everything you are doing as a leader. Just be organized and then be open to ideas. So uh there was this manager who used to tell us that his teammates are his best source of information his best source of information so anytime he needed in any brainstorming he would schedule an ideation hour we used to call it ideation hour where we join and it's a random topic and we want to talk about it so everyone bring their ideas on the table the manager could have so many possibilities probably go to the director or ask a friend who knows much about the situation or a certain project or google or go to youtube everything but no that does not work when you want to be a proactive leader you should be uh leveraging your team for any ideas for the next strategic planning i'm not saying these uh on a high level team leadership position even to you yourself as a team member when you get to join as a junior or as an associate you should be leveraging to anyone within your team for any ideas you want to discuss or any ideas you want to get or any problem you want to solve you should be involving your team members actually that's how you even build a strong team that trusts you when you are being so resourceful or you are being so ideative people like you that way and then also have a calm the manual maintain composure avoid any emotional decision making we can understand this really big time so with all that being said would you say that you're a proactive person or a reactive person think about it yourself would you say you're a proactive person or a reactive person or are you a reactive person but in the making uh to go to moving to be a proactive person you know what do you think? So, um, most probably reactive. Okay, thank you so much, Biniam, for sharing this. Others, what do you think? You do not have to explain. Just do you think you are a reactive person or a proactive person? You do not have to explain. Just drop it in the chat box. Okay, Yvonne said a bit proactive and a bit reactive. Totally understandable, Yvonne. Uh, Fenuel said at the beginning I uh, was reactive, but I think I'm becoming more proactive now. Keep it up, Fenuel. And then Magda said both. Okay. Um, uh, yep, Daniel said it's hard to be proactive. It's very hard, I'm telling you. It takes a big heart to put yourself to positive senses, you know, like to the positive side of everything, to not think negatively. It's very hard because we are humans, but it's doable though. Um, Abdullah Hamid said, I try to be proactive, but end up being reactive. Totally understandable, it's part of the human nature, but that's why we are learning on how we can be more proactive. Uh, Carol said, uh, reactive, transforming into being proactive. That's great. Keep it up. Elia said, want to be proactive. Keep it up. Fenuel, Monday, I'm proactive. Friday, I'm reactive. <laughs> I, can, I can feel you big time. <laughs> I can feel you big time because Friday is exhausting. So 
no one wants to play <laughs> no one wants any games on fridays totally understandable so AI said uh i'm trying to be proactive keep it up rudolph i'm becoming more proactive but it has it is hard though thank you so much yeah keep it up and then abraham's <laughs> nice one yeah nice one for anyone <laughs> yeah uh and there is uh, there is someone uh actually within the team and that someone is here and i love the way last week was it last week i guess yes i guess it was last week when they approached me and they asked me about a uh, leadership perspective they are one of the team leaders that we currently have on the ongoing projects and they wanted to ask me about how do you handle team members that are not active and not responding and do you have tried to be nice and what can you do like they wanted to look for a positive side of handling things without reporting them to Rhoda so Arun uh without um I mean without sounding any way negative or without sounding so harsh I knew it was so hard to do for them so but I liked the way they approached and said what can you advise for us moving forward you know that's a proactive approach like you do not want to be on the negative side you are trying to look for solutions even though the team member is not there so i like that one i like that one so yeah it's one of the proactive things i've been seeing here and uh yeah let's keep it up it's hard to be it's hard to be proactive but it's doable so yeah let's take a look at the challenge <clears throat> So we have an introduction about uh, being proactive and being a reactive person. And uh, we have also another supporting point from the seven habits uh, of effective people, of highly effective people. <laughs> Why did I write highlights? Okay, highly effective people you know th this is just an introduction about um or some background about being proactive so let's go through the scenario straight because you will have your time to read these so in this scenario imagine you are the project leader for a crucial company initiative and by the way there is also someone who asked me like why do we talk in, talk about being project leaders when uh we are still kind of on a junior or associate level so like leadership position we come like in the next two years probably and i like the, that that you asked me the question why then why do we say always project leader and also give out leadership kind of scenarios always in career session it's because you do not know where the skills are going to land you. And most of the time we end up in startup companies. And when you end up in a startup company, do not be surprised when you find that you are the one of the very first people being hired. And in the next one month or two months, you are brought they bring a team to work under you. A, a team of other juniors to work under you. Do not be surprised. This happens. Like we do not uh, like like how we do not know how life will be tomorrow. It's just how we have to be preparing ourselves uh, on a highly perspective when we are training ourselves for, um, for any workplaces we'll be joining. So it's better to train yourself in a situation where you are a leader, better than training yourself in a situation where you are a member following all rules or doing implementations. So when you are a team leader, of course, you know what a team member should be doing. So yeah, just to answer your question here for anyone who has asked themselves the same question. So let's continue. Imagine you're a project leader for a crucial company initiative. Your team have been diligently working on a presentation due in two weeks. However, you receive an email from your manager explaining concerns about the project's progress and directions so the task 
language and communication. Assume your manager sends you the following Slack message, which we are going to see here. Consider that Slack message and the relevant data we have down here, and then create a reactive Slack reply to the manager, and then also a proactive Slack, sorry, and then also create a proactive Slack uh, reply to the manager. We want us to exercise. We cannot say, or oh, create a proactive Slack message only. No, let us create both of them so that at the end of the day, we can spot the differences. And anytime you are in the same situation, you are able to detect if you're being super reactive or a proactive person. So here's the Slack message from the manager. He wrote, Tim, I've, not, I've noticed several issues that need immediate attention regarding the ongoing project. Number one, there seems to be significant server downtime affecting our ability to make progress, you know. Number two, code reviews are taking longer than expected, code reviews, causing delays in development. Number three, resource allocation appears to be inefficient, leading to bottlenecks in critical tasks. Number four, there is a lack of progress in implementation essential features, which is concerning given our project timeline. So these are just general perspective of the situation we have. It's about server downtime, code reviews, resource allocation, and then progress. And then he says, please address these issues promptly and provide updates on your progress. Best, that is it. So reference data, server downtime, manager's observation. We have the manager's observation and we have the actual data we have, and you will spot the difference. Manager's observation, the manager believes there has been significant server downtime affecting project state progress, but what's the actual data? Like what's the truth do we have on ground? Server logs indicate consistent uptime with no reported downtime in the past week. Like you can imagine the ver in this very first message your manager sent, he is wrong. The actual data, it shows that the server logs has been really, it didn't have any issue in the past week. But for him, he is wrong here. So this is his mistake. You know, this is the manager's observation and then this is the actual data. Let's continue. Delays in code reviews, manager's observation. The manager notices delays in code reviews, potentially slowing down the development. Actual data, code reviews metrics shows that the code reviews has been not been assigned and completed within the agreed upon timeline. For this one, he's true. His observation is very true. You know, uh, the code reviews uh, being delayed, it's, it's, um, it's affecting or it's slowing down the development of whatever you are developing within your project. And actually the, the actual data shows that what he's saying is true. And then incorrect resource allocation. Manager's observation, the manager perceives that the resources are not allocated efficiently, leading to bottlenecks. Actual data, resources allocation shows that resources have been distributed according to project requirements with no apparent bottlenecks. He's also wrong about this, very wrong, because he believes otherwise but the actual data we have on ground, like the true data, it has this, you know, there are no apparent bottlenecks. And then number four, lack of progress in the feature implementation, manager's observation. The manager mentions a lack of progress in implementing certain project features. Actual data, project tracking tools indicate slow progress in feature implementation. Also, he's true about this because this is his observation and the actual data should really also tell us that there is slow progress in feature implementation. So what do we have in our data? We have one, two things that are true from his observation. And then we have two things that are not true. So as a reactive person, what do you do when someone is trying to tell you that something is wrong and you have evidence that something is not wrong? 
how do you respond to that? I'm pretty sure most of that most of us would react and be like, oh, okay. How does you would you react? I was going to say it, but this is what we are going to be replying here. Give a reactive Slack message to the manager who is true about some staffs here and who is also not true, mistaken about different staffs. And then also give a proactive Slack reply. In a proactive Slack reply, what do you do when someone has wrong information? When someone is mistaken, what do you do as a professional uh, member of a certain company, just as a professional with a proactive mindset? What do you do? I believe the very first task is very, very understandable. It's just to design two different Slack messages according to what we have here. And then number two, uh, write down and explain at least four differences you spot between your reactive Slack reply and your proactive Slack reply. You know? Number three, now as you understand the difference between reactive and proactive, reflect on your 10 Academy day-to-day -day life and share as a story of a situation where you believe you were proactive at then provide a detailed simply provide a detailed story and also tell us what three lessons you learned from your future for your future continuous growth you know a moment where you feel like you were very very proactive at handling things and then number four reflect on your 10 academy day-to-day uh, -day life also shares a story of where you believe you were reactive and provide a detailed story I think we do not say oh I don't think I was reactive anywhere no I, I believe we do not say that I liked going by the way I liked going through your procrastination challenge submissions because they were very honest very very honest and uh, I like that kind of realization about ourselves. And that really shows commitment to us to keep growing. No one said, oh, I have never procrastinated. Everyone gave, most of you, to the ones I've reviewed so far, you gave out your honest answers that it happened. Because we are actually humans and we are trying to learn. So I like that kind of honest answers. So here also, do you think there is a situation where you were reactive about certain things? Share us that story. What, what was it about? And then also share us the lessons learned for future improvement, the lessons you learned. So the marking rubrics, they reflect each question we have here. So they are nothing very different here. And then we have, uh, uh, we have resources here to refer to. Yep, that is it. Submission again, PDF, so PPT converted to PDF submitted on tanks. Let's get used to that. Not more than 10 slides uh, because that's how a good professional presentation should be about when you are not really giving out bigger reports. So let's limit our slides to 10 slides. Let's get used to, to the fact that we have to submit our report by using PowerPoint and convert them to PDF and submit on tanks. Simple. So let's take some of the things as routines and not be reminded by a document. Uh, yep, that is it. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, any questions? I can see Fenwell is saying everything is all right. Okay, not for me, thank you. Thank you, Binium. Aya, all right. Um, Mekdes, Musa, yes, Musa. Hey, Pascaline. So I have one question regarding task one, the reactive and the proactive Slack message. So mm -hmm. like the manager actually sent us this Slack message, yet, right? So mm -hmm. how could we be proactive about something that had already happened. Wouldn't the response be a reactive response to the manager? Uh, not sure I understand the question very well. So for task one, 
Mm -hmm. we, we, we are going to write a reactive Slack reply to the manager and the proactive Slack reply to the manager, right? Mm -hmm. But um, the manager has sent us a message already and we are going to be replying to that message. So wouldn't that be a reactive uh, reply instead of a proactive reply? Oh, no. Uh, so I guess I understand what you mean. You are saying that responding to this email would look like we are being reactive. Is yeah. it true? Yes. No, no. Responding to emails, it's our response. No, even to Slack messages, it's our responsibilities. We are supposed to answer any questions we are asked. The reactive or proactive part comes in a way we deliver the message. How did you deliver the information you wanted to deliver as a response to what you've been asked? Um, so is there like an example that you can give for each scenario? Okay, let me think. I will give you an example. So, for instance, uh, you come as a uh, as Musa and you type on Slack, and you tag uh, Rodes. Hey, Rodes, we haven't seen the recording for this uh, milky session. It's not on YouTube yet. Like, can you check that? You know, it's just a simple question. And then Rodes either has to reply. We, and let's assume that the recording is already there, but you haven't seen it yet on your side. So Rodas have two things to do. Either he can tell you like, why, why don't you check your YouTube like regularly and refresh? Like there is the kind of attitude that comes with a reacting message. Like what, why don't you care to just refresh your page and uh, double check be, be, before you come here and ask this kind of question? Or she can be, she can give you an proactive answer and inform you that the record is already on YouTube. Like, please refresh and you will find it there. So that's like a very small prompt example I'm getting to my mind. Two different answers. Reactive comes with an attitude and it comes with a sense of defense. Like you are defending that things has been done, but you are, delivering the message in kind of wrong or rude manner you know but proactive approach it comes with you being calm and then responding okay. positively yeah pro providing the information i believe that is easy to understand somehow did it help yeah so basically it's about how we uh, respond and how we, the attitude, uh, uh, there is an attitude factor to the reactive response and there is a, a, a normal uh, attitude for the proactive response, right? Absolutely, you are correct. Yeah, all right, thank you. <clears throat> okay, Feniel said, think of it like this, reactive, emotional, and justification. Very true. Like, you are trying to win the but the discussion. Can I call it like that? So you are justifying things, and you are involving your emotions. But proactive, you provide a solution and explain instead of defending. Thank you yeah. so much, Feniel. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny. OK. Yep. Um, thanks everyone. Then we call it a day and see you very soon in our fun Tuesday CBS. I'm excited about today's ones. Uh, yep. See you everyone. <laughs>